Issues around the resettlement of vulnerable children are very much in the minds of many members of this House. But it's vital that we recognise the strength of both the Government's and the United Kingdom's position when it comes to ensuring, in practice, the safety and well-being of refugee children. Border policy is and has always been a national competence, not one of the European Union. And it is absolutely right that the opportunity to fully debate these issues will come in due course when an immigration bill comes before the House. <coughs> but those of us closer to the sharp end of refugee resettlement will welcome the rejection of the amendments to Section 37 of this bill. And very briefly, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm going to explain why. The family reunion provisions are only relevant to a very tiny minority and to those children who are already in the care of authorities in other European countries. But those of us who had the opportunity to visit the jungle camp in Calais and see the traffickers like the sharks circling amongst nearly 10,000 vulnerable and destitute people will recognise that those provisions have long been seen in the case of the United Kingdom, because of our geography, as an exploitable route for traffickers to create the opportunity of family reunion and encourage people to consign vulnerable people, sometimes children, to the backs of lorries, to dinghies across the channel in an attempt to open a family reunion route. When I hear members talking with concern about the hostile environment, I think we've seen in the last few months there are few environments more hostile than those when it comes to the life and well-being of vulnerable <coughs> refugees. The second reason that we need to uh, be pleased that those amendments have been rejected is the issue at the heart of family reunion provisions, and that is the issue of parental responsibility. It has been said by many members, and it has said a great deal in the media, that we want to renew, re reunite children with their families. But those of us who have experience of those provisions have found in practice what tends to happen is that young people are brought to the United Kingdom to be linked up with a distant cousin, maybe a teenager, and in practice they almost immediately become an unaccompanied asylum-seeking child and therefore in the care system of this country. And that really links to the third reason, which is that for young refugees who are in the European Union, they are already within countries that have child protection systems that are very similar, equivalent, in some cases better, to our own. And the arrangements which the European Union, supported strongly by the United Kingdom, has in place, in particular with Turkey, but also with other countries around the Middle East and North Africa area, mean that there is usually a very real prospect of reuniting those young people with those with parental responsibility, either mum and dad, or at least close family members who are in a refugee camp in the system in one of those countries. So it is going to be extremely rare that the best interest test will be passed in demonstrating that someone is better coming to a distant cousin who cannot look after them in the UK rather than being reunited with mum and dad who may be in a refugee camp in Jordan or indeed in Turkey. So in conclusion, Mr Speaker, our local authorities in the United Kingdom have long battled with the consequences of the exploitation by traffickers of some weaknesses in our border system. And they do a remarkable job in challenging circumstances when we look at the outcomes that those children and young people go on to achieve. The UK has a huge reservoir of goodwill, and that goodwill is reflected in the actions both of this government and previous governments when it comes to the support for child refugees. But our communities expect, in order to maintain that goodwill, that there will be robust, effective, efficient and just arrangements that minimise the risks to children. And Section 37 of this Bill, as proposed by the Government, opens the possibility of such arrangements when the Immigration Bill comes forward. It is, in practice, a more compassionate and more pragmatic way forward on this issue than anything that I have heard proffered by the opposition. It is one of many reasons to support this bill, and I commend that section to this House and to all members.